All right, so now we're into uh, the part three of the uh, CDE, the range CDE, and that is the site description section. Site description is really important because it tells you um, whether this site would be good for recreation or maybe it's good for solar power or maybe it's good for cattle or for mountain goats. The, when you know the, so the type of soil, the amount of biomass that's on a site and the slope and aspect, that tells you what that site would be good for. So that's what site description is. And uh, the first thing that you're gonna do on site description is we're gonna have a soil pit for you here. Uh, and you're gonna do, uh, first to see how deep it is, we're gonna dig the soil pit down as far as we can. It might be really shallow, and so that would mean less than 20 inches until we come to a restricting layer, or it might be deep. We'll take the soil out of there and we'll put it in a bucket so that you can do the soil texture. Now, I'm not gonna do that right now because you can look on the ticks and tri tricks and tips part of this uh, video and we will show you how to dig a soil pit and how to do soil texture if you've not done that before. Um, and then, the, so you've done the depth of the soil, the texture of the soil. And the other thing you have to know about is what's the climate like around here? How much precipitation does this place get? That's something before you start the CDE, you have to, you have to know in your head what the categories are. And on the data sheet, or on this, um, the contest sheet, it says that you have to see if the precipitation zone is a desert, semi-desert, upland, mountain, high mountain, or, uh, or alpine. Now, for example, an upland site is 13 to 16 inches of precipitation. So we'll have a sign that shows you how much precipitation is here. You will need to know what category that's in. Then you'll look in the soil pit, then you'll do the soil texture. The other two things that we have at this uh, part of the event is the, the uh, we're gonna use a clinometer to look at the slope and aspect. So let's go do that next. Okay, we're back on site description, and one of the most important things of site description is what the slope and aspect are. So uh, when you're in the CDE, you'll uh, come to the place, there'll be a, a placard that says site, uh, slope and aspect. There'll be two, um, two posts or stakes that are 100 feet apart. So you can see here, I've got one right here. If you look down there, you'll see a pink flagging. That is the other one that's 100 feet apart. Um, to, to do slope, you use what we call a clinometer. It, you're looking at the cline of something, how declined or inclined is it. Uh, you can do the clinometer from either the bottom to the top or the top to the bottom. I tend to do it from the, from the top to the bottom. Uh, we'll have clinometers and compasses by the stakes for you when you do this or you can bring your own. You just have to show us that, that it isn't set to anything. So the way clinometers work is I'm going to look from here to the top of that post down there and I'm going to look in the I'm going to look in the kilometer, and there's a way to read it. There's a way that you can see what the slope is. When you look at the tips and tricks for this section, I'll show you exactly how to use a clinometer and what it looks like. For right now, you just know that it's a clinometer that's going to give you the slope. Then on your score sheet, you're going to just put it in the category that best describes that slope. So again, go to the, t the tips and tricks part if you want to need know how to use a clinometer. There's also, um, on the compass, on most modern compasses, there's a clinometer. So if you don't have the $90 that it costs for a clinometer, you can use your compass. And the way that you do that is when you're looking at a compass, again, we'll show you this close up, there's a little arrow that points down. And if you hold the compass at the arrow, at the, uh, so I'm gonna look down the, the uh, edge and I'm gonna make sure that I'm at the, looking at the top of the other, um, stake down there and then wherever that little arrow is that will tell you what the slope is so there's two there is a clinometer built into most compasses or you can use the uh, silver coated the uh, enclosed clinometer so other thing that you should know is that most modern compasses today uh, have a clinometer on them if you look at them there's a little arrow that kind of points down and if you point the compass and line the top of this up with that stake down there, you can look and read the um, angle that that is at. So we will show you a little bit more about that in the trips, the, the tips and tricks part of this. And, uh, and then that will give you the guidelines of how to use your compass for a clinometer. The next thing we're gonna do is think about the slope. Now the slope is really important thing. The slope is what direction is this slope here, this hillside facing? If you took your water bottle and you dumped it on the ground, what direction is the water going to go? 
in this event, we've got these two stakes that you've just used to tell what the slope is. Those are also the two stakes that you're gonna say, uh, that you're gonna use to say what the direction is or what the aspect is. What is the aspect of the slope? To do that, we're gonna use a sighting compass. A mirrored or a sighting compass is the, is the, the thing that we use out in the field as professional range managers because slope is really important and this is the way that we see what direction, what aspect that slope is facing. Uh, so uh, you can find other compasses, by the way. A lot of times if you see a compass that's flat that doesn't have a mirror, that's the kind of compass that you would use on a map and we would call that a map compass. And it's helpful or sometimes when you get, you know, get a kit for outdoors, you'll just get a flat compass that's just like a, a flat um, module. It, it can help you and get you in the right direction. But to be really accurate, you need a mirrored compass. So for a mirrored compass, I'm just gonna stand here. I'm gonna look at that um, stake down there. I'm gonna look up. I'm gonna go straight above that stake. And the reason I'm going above that stake is in order for a compass to work, it has to be flat. So I'm gonna put that stake in the notch of the compass. And again, we're gonna show you some guidelines on this. And then I'm gonna read the angle of the aspect. So, uh, when you come to this part of the event, you're gonna to wanna to do the slope and the aspect. You will do slope with a clinometer and you do the aspect with your compass. And we'll give you more details on this later.